The first thing of when you look at a black athlete that's six foot two, six foot three, six foot four, 200, 300 pounds, solid, thick, muscular, breaking down, buckling, if that's the word, buckle on TV for the whole world to see, know that it is planned that the white media is doing that for a specific reason and that specific reason is one is to put fear into you here it is it's this big black man you look up to him you got posters of him posted up all over your wall you know that he's your hero And it's, he can't do no bad. And put to the test, whatever it is, your hero will come through and save the day. You turn on the TV and you're looking at your hero and he's crying in front of white America. As a kid, as a young man that looks up to this man that's crying on TV, They're sitting there now, hopeless. They're in fear of their lives because no one can protect them. You see, like bef beforehand, you know, when he's, they didn't see that black athlete crying on TV, they had hope. They just knew that this big black man is crying on TV, this athlete, that he can face the face of racism. But now he's buckled. And that puts the fear, the doubt inside of a young kid's mind, inside of a young man's mind. So know that, that the, the, those are the reasons why you see black athletes crying on TV and white media plastering all over the place. The next thing it does it's my opinion that it infeminizes a young kid, a young black kid, a young black boy. Because now he's saying to himself, man, I may get shot and killed if I'm a man. I may get shot and killed if, if I uh, walk around as an alpha man, a masculine man. So the only way that I could practice self-preservation is to turn into a female. Now I know some of you all will say that that's far-fetched, but I just think that that's my, that is my opinion. That as a female, I'll be more safer being a female than when I was a man, a male. You got to understand what it psychologically does to us to see our heroes. These big, they always find the biggest and the strongest to sit in front of the camera and cry in front of America. Have you ever seen, let's say, Brent Favre cry? Used to be a quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Have you ever seen him cry? I have. I'll raise my hand. I have. He cried for the game. He cried because he couldn't play anymore. He had to retire. That's what he was crying for. Have you ever seen a white man cry, white athlete cry for black lives? And the answer is no. And you'll never see it. Because if you did, then you know what? Image is everything. You'll see change. If you saw that. 
And these people, these demonic people that sit behind the curtain that you never see, they are programming you. Everything is engineered to be a certain way. It's planned. Just like how, I'll give you an example. Just like how when Tamar Rice died, they showed that cop get out of the car. Didn't ask Tamar Rice any questions. Jump out of the car. I could go as far as to say that he might have he got out so fast that he he it, it could have been possible that he probably didn't even put the car in drive. I mean park. And the first thing he did was pull out that gun and shot and killed that boy. And that was plastered all over TV for the whole world to see. You don't think that we're suffering from mental problems? Check it. When a man joins the army and he goes to war, he sees his fellow friends shot, killed in war. He comes back home. He wakes up in the middle of the night, has sweats. He wakes up in the middle of the night having cold sweats. He goes to see a psychologist. That psychologist tells him that he has P PSTD. So what's the difference between that man that was at war seeing his fellow friends, his fellow buddies being shot and killed in front of him than seeing, and, and black people seeing a, ma a black man choked to death on TV. A black man uh, uh, um, uh, uh, shot, well, excuse me, a, a, a young kid shot and killed by a police officer. In the case of uh, George Floyd, a knee on the neck and you slowly but surely seeing this man die but I guess we some strong black folks and we can we can take that no we need to go see a psychologist young black boys are telling their black mothers that they're scared to go outside because the police are going to kill me Come on, man. This is all designed to put the fear in our hearts and minds. So this is the reason why they're showing you these big black men, physically fit, but mentally they're weak. They may be strong on that basketball court. They may be strong on that football uh, field, but they're weak in mind, docile. They're showing you that we can handle the elite. White America can put their knee down on the elite. You're black athletes. Just think about that. They had to show you that George Floyd. Look, look how tall and big he was. And look how they took down that gentle, gentle giant. They made sure that you heard him begging for his life. Please, mama, please. I'm five foot eight. I've been jumped. Dude, I don't know if you can still see it. Dude had a ring, punched me right in, in, in my, my face right here. I heard it when he did it. My face said, Phew, and blood squirted everywhere, and blood was trickling down my face. I still got up and fought. Three dudes jumped me. See, I'm tough. I don't want that street thug approval. I don't have to be from the streets to be tough. This is ridiculous. Grown ass men crying like bitches on TV. While when you look back at history, the Black Panthers were teenagers. Teenagers. Huey P. Newton graduated from college and he knew the law. He studied the law. These were educated, militant young black men and women. 
and you got grown ass black men crying on TV like as if we need that right now to see that but we do because white America is not attempting they're putting the fear in the hearts and minds of black people don't you ever cross that line you N-I-G-G-E-R or you'll be up there crying let me tell you something I already told the mother of my children I know my mother won't do it because she's 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 gonna she's gonna be the same way but I already told my mother the mother of my children I said yo listen let me tell you something if anything happens to me tell the truth don't be getting up on TV talking about some can we all get along kumbaya my lord kumbaya don't be holding hands walking down the street with uh, uh, Trayvon Martin's uh, 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 mother and George Floyd's uh, not mother but jo- the fam- a, fr- a family member of George Floyd's Tamar Rice's mother uh uh-uh, uh I don't want none of that I don't want none of it I want to tell you what I want so bad but YouTube is 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 a place where if you say certain things your voice would be canceled and I have more to talk about I have more to say specifically to the youth but you know what time it is you black so you know what time it is you know what I want you know what I want period don't misrepresent me Cause I ain't Dr. Martin Luther King Period So The reason why these black You see these black athletes On TV Crying Is to Show you that image Show you that you can't depend on nobody Look at your big black Bulky masculine men with the physical appearance as like they they are intimidating if you were to look at them but they're really not they're sheeps they're little lambs that can be tamed black people let's get it together our heroes can't be these black men black athletes all they're good for is a, a basketball in the basket and a goddamn touchdown. That's it. Our heroes need to be Huey P. Newton, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, the Mau Mouse, the Haitian Revolution, Ma- Mansa Musa, and the list goes on. You trying to figure out why in the world your child is weak because you don't put them in front of real heroes (laughs) they can only imitate what they see thus history will repeat them itself period we don't have any Allen Iversons right now we don't (laughs) yo I'm out man My name is Langston2092. I want you to like, comment, and definitely subscribe to this this, this channel. We don't have any Muhammad Ali's out here. We don't. We don't. We got a Floyd Mayweather, though. What good is he? We don't have no Muhammad Ali's, my man. We don't have no Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's out there. They stood for something. I'm out, man.